Have you ever wondered why people use Telnet to manage their devices, even though SSH has been out for years and years and is way more secure? It's just so easy. And it's the same way with SNMP version 3. It's been out for years and years, super secure, but version 2 is just so easy, even though it lacks almost all security whatsoever. And if you go on Google and you're like, hey, how, help me understand SNMP version 3, it's like, it's like the documentation is just meant to be confusing. It's, throw me a bone here, people. So anyway, that's why we're here. This micro nugget will make you an SNMP version 3 ninja. To really get SNMP version 3, we have to take a quick time travel back to version 1 and version 2. Version 1's main achievement, being alive. It was the first open standard to be adopted. People were like, this thing is great. It really is simple uh, to monitor our devices with this. So version 2 became just a feature pack upgrade to version 1 to where it's like, okay, now we can make this more efficient. We can make it better. We can add more monitoring uh, capabilities to it. But it really still lacked any kind of authentication or encryption mechanism. The thing it did have was a community value, which is essentially a pre-shared key, the keys to the kingdom on the device that you're managing to where you can read all of the, the sensors on there or you could read and write, yeah, scary, all of the sensors on there without any kind of encryption or authentication mechanism in place. So version 3 came about and took a long time to be adopted because it's a big protocol change. It's, you have to implement that in all kinds of devices, which added the capability to do authentication and encryption. That's what we're going to talk about right here. So let's talk about one more concept, which is the object identifiers and management information base. These really define what you can monitor on your different devices. So let's let's just say that I, I uh, as an inventor, uh, built a network-enabled coffee pot, right? Here's my little carafe, you know, the brew, it's dripping down into there. So I've got this, it's Wi-Fi, right? We're, we're next generation. So Wi-Fi, and I say, okay, I'm going to define some sensors on this thing that can be monitored with SNMP. Like, for instance, uh, I want to be able to tell if it's brewing or not. So I can have a monitoring system that's that's telling me when my coffee is done brewing. So from my computer, I'm able to see that. Maybe, maybe I have a monitor for the temperature so I know how hot the coffee is or <laughs> maybe I put a button on here that tells if somebody brews caffeinated or uh, decaf uh, coffee which tells me if I want to get coffee at all uh, at this point so so you get the point or, or how full there we go how full the coffee pot is so I can know if I'm going to come there and just get the, you know the nasty stuff whatever so all of these things uh, can be assigned their own little object identifier which in SNMP is a numeric string think of it think of it like a big catalog you know to where you, you go to certain sections of the catalog so maybe Maybe I have a whole section uh, of, of sensors that deal with the brewing type, and I have the another set. You get the point. Now, now let's move over to our network devices that we're monitoring. Usually, you have sections like the interface. How many packets came in that interface? How many errors that interface has had? Is that interface up or down? I mean, there's there's just whole libraries of of OIDs, and you take all of the OIDs for your device that you create or you manage, and you put them together into a big book that people call a management information base. That allows you to take your monitoring system. Let's just say you're using PRTG, one of my favorite uh, monitoring system to watch all these different devices, including my little coffee pot uh, maker over here um, that I can't draw really fast. I would import my management information base, uh, the library of OIDs, essentially, that have been defined for my coffee pot that doesn't look like one, into PRTG, and now I'm able to add the sensors one by one and say, okay, PRTG, you go tell me every 30 seconds if that, if that coffee pot is full or not, and sound an alarm if it ever drops below a quarter full. Okay, so that's, that's that's the concept of OIDs, MIBs, key to SNMP. Now let's focus in on SNMP version 3. Three new elements get introduced. First off, the view. This defines what you're able to see on the Cisco device. There's a lot of creepy stuff that you can pull with SNMP. You can even pull device passwords if you know what you're doing. So you might create a view that says, I only want to be able to have people see the interfaces of this device and maybe, you know, the statistics of those interfaces. Or, I mean, you could even go further. You could say just that interface of the device. Maybe you've got a partner company who who uh, connects on that interface and they want to be able to see the statistics of how much traffic is being sent and all that. You can, you can create a view which restricts it down to just that. You then associate the view with a group which defines the 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 uh, type of access read only or read write as well as what kind of uh, security is enabled for that and then you associate that with a user which defines the the meat of it what what the username is what the password is and really the levels of encryption and authentication you'd like to use well, the best way to see this is to see it configured for yourself. So I'm going to go in and configure these three elements. And uh, first, we'll start off with the view, restricting what people have access to. So I'm going to say SNMP server view. We get to name it. Well, let's start off with one that gives people access to everything. I'm going to say all access, right? Uh, this is where most people get stuck. Watch this. Word. 
<laughs> Thanks, Cisco. Uh, they're, they're saying, well, what is the MIB View family name? Well, what's that mean? It means Cisco wants you to go out to their SNMP object navigator. Just type that into Google. You'll find it. Uh, and says, well, you know, what area do you want to be able to search? Now, let's just use their example, this IF index, right? You type it in there and say, I want to look at the interface indexes. And they, they explain. They go, okay, well, here's the OID of the interface index on our devices. Uh, and then they show you the whole tree of how they got there. See, SNMP, this, this is why it's so important to understand this concept of MIB. Uh, management Information Base is organized in this tree structure because ISO, the International Standard Organization body, said, well, people are going to make coffee makers, they're going to make routers and switches and servers. We've got to organize these sensors so it's not just random chaos with how people create the sensors except for Jeremy's Coffee Pot. So they'll create, you know, ma a major branch of, of uh, uh, sensors right here and then sub-branches and then sub-branches and it goes all the way down. And if you look back over here, uh, we actually see ISO org, DOD, internet management, MIB2, interfaces, all the way to the interface table, interface entry, index. So so when you're looking, you're like, okay, well, this is actually the OID because this is, you see, 1.3.6.1, you see, 1.3. You, you see how that works. So, so this gives people access to the interface index. Now, I could go in there and I could say they could have access to, well, here, let me, let me copy and paste this. So because they could have access to this you know, paste, and I'll say that's included in this view and hit enter. That's one way to add it. Or I could uh, go in there and I could just type the name. I could uh, hit the SNMP uh, server view all access and I could say IF index. Well, I, hang on, let me show this to you. IF index, watch watch this, and included. It's like bad OID. It's very case sensitive. You notice it's got a capital I right there. So I actually have to go up here and say IF index, uh, oop, IF index I bang now it's going to accept that because it's got the case right so that's a pretty lame sensor especially since we named it all access that that essentially allows people to see the the interface index and that's it so if I really wanted to create an all access I would say well they actually have access to ISO right all access the MIB name will be ISO uh, and that automatically gives them access to everything below ISO which is everything underneath there if you wanted to restrict it to just one interface you could figure out which interface index you want to give access to and then drill down there and what sensors you want to ha have access to of that interface I mean there's there's a lot that you're able to do uh, with that so uh, let's create another view let's let's just say uh, I want to create an SMP server view and let's just say people to be able to monitor the interface right you see this interface entry right there which allows them to monitor all the interface all the indexes all of the different things down here uh, so I could say uh, interface access right and I could do if entry uh, included so now I've got two views right uh, and all access that I can give people access to and then just an interface access now that I've created the view, I can go in and create the group, right? I associate the group with it. Now, here's how it works. Man, I, there's so much to this. I have to talk fast. So as an MP server group, I give it a group name. So let's just call it group one, right? Um, so this is going to define what kind of security model you want to use. So do you want to use version one, two, or three? Well, obviously we want to use SNMP version three. That's why we're here. Now the big question, do you want to have no authentication and encryption? That's what no auth is. Do you just want to have authentication, but no encryption? That's what auth does. Or do you want to have in, uh, authentication and encryption, which probably most people want if they're going to go with SNMP version 3. This is the privilege, uh, I'll, I'll say the, the security level, the privacy level, authentication and privacy that you want to require for this. So I would say if you're going to use version 3, then good grief, why would you use anything else but PRIV, which requires uh, authentication and encryption? Then we get to say, okay, I'm going to give group 1 read access to the and then this is where we get to go in and say the view let's say all access ah you see how, how we're starting to put these lego pieces together right so i just said there's now this group it's called group one it's going to use snmp version three which is going to require to get to get to this group which means to get to this view you're going to be required to authenticate and have encryption i haven't said what kind yet but that's that's what that is and they will have read only access to all the sensors on this device now the last one that ties it all together, the SNMP server user, right? So I'm going to say the name of this user is going to be me, Jeremy. <laughs> and then I'm going to say I'm going to belong to group one. I just put this user, Jeremy, inside of the group. Next thing, it says, well, what, what version of security model will this user use? And we're going to match the group. We're going to say version three. I'm going to use the uh, uh, authentication of SHA. Right? This is going to be the, the kind of authentication because passwords are actually hashed. It's never sent over in clear text. So I'm going to use SHA authentication. And the password for this user is going to be uh, Ninja SNMP. 
right? So that'll be the password that I'm required to authenticate with the username Jeremy. I then hit the question mark and says, okay, well, what kind of encryption parameters do you want to use for this user? And this version of the iOS only supports DES 56. Now, I will tell you, Later versions of the iOS will add triple DES and AES as long as your monitoring system, your monitoring software, whatever you're using, supports those level of encryption as well, you're good to go. Enter. <laughs> that, that was anticlimactic. Hang on. Oh, the privacy password. We said we, we're, we're going to enable encryption. So what is your shared secret? Essentially, what is, what is you know, there has to be something that, that generates those encryption keys. So this is where I'll just put, you know, well... You have to remember it, so <laughs> you, you want it to be more than ASDF, ASDF, but that's going to be the shared secret key that's used. And now we've got our first SNMP version 3 user that's used. This device is ready to be monitored with SNMP version 3. The last thing I want to show you is what it looks like to add a device to a monitoring system using SNMP version 3. So let's just say I was adding this device, whatever it was, uh, R1 router. Uh, to I would type in the name, the IP address of it. Then it would come down to the SNMP uh, device settings, and I would say, okay, we're actually going to be using version 3. Now we match it to that user account that we created. I would say, well, we're actually using SHA authentication. The username is Jeremy. The password is, what was that, Ninja SNMP. Uh, and then we've got the encryption type. Well, it's DES in this case, and ASD. ASDF is my data encryption key. We don't need a context name because uh, we're actually associating this user with the view. Well, we're associating with the group, which associates with the view. Uh, and then I hit continue, and, uh, and now it would actually go in and add that device. I don't have connectivity to it, but it would add the device and now be using a secured connection to monitor to that device. Well, there it is, SNMP version 3 in as condensed of a description as I could manage. <laughs> I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.